started, please welcome Eric Goddard and Matt Cook. Not just these two guys, special guest as well. Everybody say hi to Tonka. <laughs> Eric, tell us about this little guy. Uh, this is just my uh, French bulldog named Tonka. Had him for, uh, he's about a year old. And I got, can't leave him at home alone anymore. He's getting kind of sad, so. <laughs> so you had to take him with you? That's awesome. He's up here on the show. He's going to stay with us the entire time? Yeah, I uh, hope so. <laughs> He's usually pretty good, so. Cookie, you have any pets? Yeah, I, uh, our family has a dog. Uh, okay. He's a nine-year-old golden lab. All right. Well, uh, charitable efforts by the penguins, of course, so important here during the holidays. And perfect tie-in. Gods, you want to talk with you about the Penguins and Paws calendar. It's a, a great calendar that benefits the local charities for animal shelters, a couple of them here in Pittsburgh. Tell us about it a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, charity that's kind of going on. I know a lot of the kind of the, the girls have been uh, selling the calendar, trying to raise uh, money for the animal shelters and stuff like that. It's uh, been a really good thing. A lot of guys had their own pets and took pictures or put them in, and they threw them in the calendar. And this little guy stole the show. <laughs> and you also made the trips to the children's hospital, actually a couple of them. So tell us about that and what it meant to you. Um, it was good to go around the holidays and stuff like that, uh, kind of just say, hang out with some of the kids. Uh, we went uh, all as a team, and all the guys went and uh, kind of spread out and went to uh, in Florida. I mean, it's a great facility they have now. It's it's actually, it's really huge, so I mean, it's tough for everyone to get to uh, every room, but I mean, if uh, we all split up into groups, uh, we covered a lot of ground and saw a lot of kids. Tonka's so well behaved. Look at him. He's... He's like posing right there on the stage, posing for the camera. He knows he's on camera. He's on television right now, so he looks good. Yeah, yeah, he knows. Uh, he knows when people are checking him out. So, <laughs> Cookie, let's talk about some charitable efforts of yours. First of all, up in Ontario, the Cook Family Foundation of Hope, big part of your life. Tell us about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that my wife and I started uh, three years ago, September, and. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, we had a loss in our family uh, and knew we were going to do something but just had to wait until it was okay for uh, my brother-in-law and his wife to have their story told. And um, You know, our website's foundationofhope.ca and uh, the whole story's there, but in a quick just that uh, um, we had a niece that was stillborn at uh, 38 weeks and her name was Hope. Okay, and uh, tell us about your day with the Stanley Cup because I know you raised money for the foundation. Yeah, you're allotted uh, a certain amount of time to have the cup in public, and uh, we maximized that. Um, had spent three hours doing a signing, um, and all it was five dollars. You get uh, an eight by ten photo of uh, that incorporated our foundation and me holding the cup up, and uh, and then they also got to take their own picture with the cup. It was five dollars, like I said, and. Uh, um, all of the proceeds went to our foundation, which in turn went back to the community. All right, well, coming up, we'll have more with Matt Cook and Eric Goddard. And up next, Penguins Insider with Mario Lemieux behind the bench. Dan Potash will be taking a look at that. So we'll be right back on Inside Penguins Hockey, presented by Comcast. Maybe coaching somewhere down the line? Yeah, Cookie? Cookie? I don't know. seeing you on the ice there. Yeah, I mean, my uh, my son's five, and my daughter, my middle daughter's eight, and they love to come down to the rink uh, whenever they get the opportunity and get on the ice, and um, they they just have fun with it now, and you know who who knows where it leads. All right, well, uh, Godzi, what about you? Coaching in your future someday, way down the line? Um, I don't know, maybe to like uh, some sort of minor hockey thing, but I don't know if I could uh, put up with the long hours these uh, guys put <laughs> put in. What about when you were 13, if you had Mario Lemieux coaching you? Well, I mean, <laughs> it would be like it, the greatest day in the world, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, uh, he was an amazing player, and, and at that time, or time frame for me when I was 13, uh, that would have been a huge thrill. 
Cookie, I want to talk with you about your role kind of as an agitator and a guy who plays hard out there every single shift. And tell us about your playing style, how you developed that style of play. I just make life tough for gods, that's all. <laughs> um, He's the policeman, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, uh, I, I think uh, probably the, the biggest thing for me um, growing up playing was is that I, I wanted to be into the game, and um, I really, because on Saturday nights the Toronto Maple Leafs played quite often, and um, I liked the way that Wendell Clark played the game. And, um, he was physical, and he was aggressive, uh, and you know, even if he didn't score, he was a part of the game, and I think that that was something that I, I wanted to build for my, myself, and um, you know, a physical part of the game is, is something that I want to bring each and every night and chip in offensively whenever I can. What about sparking the team? Seems like sometimes there might be a little bit of a lull in the game, but a big hit by you can get the team going. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, big hits are contagious, and um, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm not the only guy. I, we, we have Brooks Orpik that goes out there and throws the body arm pretty good, and you know Eric does, and Craig Adams does, and you know there's a bunch of guys, Mike Rupp, that that, that go out and you know when they get the opportunity, they're going to make the hit, and it's usually a big one, and it's it's fun for our team, and like I said, it's contagious. Eric, how about for you, the role of the policeman out there on the ice, and how much pride do you take in the fact that when you're out there, nobody's going to mess with your teammates, nobody. Um, I try not to, I don't know if I think of it that way, um, <laughs> but just trying, that's kind of the rolling team, and uh, it's definitely a good team to be part of. I mean, like uh, Matt was saying, with him being physical, I mean, that's one of the aspects that uh, we want to bring to every game, um, whether it gets uh, to what I got to do or not, and it's different, but definitely, like you said, a, like a big hit can spark the team, and I know their line with uh, Jordan Stall and Kennedy brings a lot of energy uh, and uh, sets good examples for the rest of us to follow during the game. Tell us about growing up. You had three older brothers. That must have made you pretty tough, right? Yeah, it wasn't. It was. Uh, they took their uh, took their toll on me. Uh, I always said I'd get them back, but once I got old enough, they said it, we were too old and <laughs> they were. It was too immature to. So uh, I never got my chance to get them back. You got a lot of kids here in the audience. Anybody have three older brothers? One in the back, two in the back. Any advice for these youngsters here? Yeah, uh, just ride it out. Uh, <laughs> ride it out, yeah. You'll get your chance later. Eric, we talked about Matt Cook being an agitator. What would it be like playing against him? Maybe you did earlier. I know you guys were in opposite conferences for a while there, but tell me about playing against Matt Cook. Any run-ins that we should know about? You used to ask him about a preseason game between Vancouver and Calgary a couple oh, years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened there, Matt? Uh, actually, it was after the whistle. and uh, oh. Eric, That is still, better. Matt still hits guys after the whistle. I mean, he's still fair game <laughs> to me. So uh, I, we were skating in the corner directed at each other, and I gave Eric a little fake as if I was going to hit him, and he smoked me. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good fake. I really thought he was going to try and come at me, so <laughs> him a little shoulder. He went flying into the glass. You don't hold it against him. No, I now mean, you're buddies. I mean, he went he went to the penalty box in okay. two minutes, and he felt shame, and <laughs> and then he got free. Now it's a great story. <laughs> All right, now it's an awesome story. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to have some one timers, and we're going to wrap up the show coming up shortly. We'll be right back on Inside Penguins Hockey, presented by Comcast.